Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. James Gill and you've joined me for another clinical skills video. Today we're going to be doing the deep dive on the elbow. So going through exactly what it is we're doing during the examination. So we've already had the demonstration of the elbow examination with Megan and that will hopefully explain all those bits that we did. So to start off any examination, obviously we need to make sure that we've gelled our hands. And that can allow you to have a good look at the patient to start off with to see if there are any abnormal uh, changes to the joint in question. So the standard orthopaedic examination is look, feel and move. And as we'll see here, we're going to tweak that ever so slightly because we're going to be doing some of the movements before we're actually palpating the patient to give a good idea about what's going on. For the elbow examination, we want to have the patient stand in the anatomical position. So with your hands to the side, and we can see here there's a bend to the elbow on both sides. This is the carrying angle. So we want to see that that carrying angle is normal, i.e. we should be getting somewhere between 5 and 15 degrees of valgus position, not a deformity, I, I crucially add. So this is termed cubitus valgus. And just to reiterate, to make sure we're all on the same uh, point, uh, valgus being deviation of from the joint with the uh, distal limb away from the, uh, the midline. We can have injuries, normally if we've had fractures to the distal humerus, resulting in a change in that um, uh, valgus angle to perhaps a cubitor varus. So cubitor varus being the case when we've got under five degrees of flexion, which is indicative of there being a problem. And that's, as I say, often from a fracture, but can also be um, congenital as well. And that's important because it might suggest a difficulty in using the elbow in certain ways, as we'll see in a moment. Having done that initial overview, we also need to have a look behind. So if you could turn around for me. And here we're looking at the uh, olecranon itself and checking the olecranon fossa and to see if there's any swelling or inflammation to either side. We also want to check to make sure there's no temperature which might indicate the presence of an infection. We can try and palpate the tricep tendon at that point on both sides as well to see if there's discomfort there. We can also palpate to the olecranon fossa just superior to the olecranon to see if there's any bogginess or swelling here. So if you could turn backwards for a turn back and we want to again check a couple of movements at the wrist. So we'll, not, we'll get the patient at 90 degrees and then we want to check, check supination and pronation but I'm specifically going to hold their arm here because I will be able to feel the movement of the radial head under my fingers as we're checking supination and pronation. So essentially I'm gaining two uh, examination findings for the price of one. And similarly, a problem at the radial head here is going to be the, one of the commonest causes where the patient can't supinate and pronate the wrist. Now, staying with those angles of the arms, if you could put your elbows out all the way to the side. So we're looking to see if there's any evidence of a flexion or extension deformity. So we should be going from naught degrees extension, or uh, if you try and touch your shoulder for me, to about 40 degrees of um, flexion. And if we can do both together, and we've got a nice uh, symmetrical flexion. And back out, extension on both sides, excellent. Often, when you get an injury to the elbow, particularly if it's a bony contusion, there's going to be a problem with the uh, extension. Now, often uh, you'll find that you can get up to 30 degrees of fixed flexion form deformity without any issue. The problem comes, however, if we find a reduction in flexion, so the patient can only flex their arm so far. There are very few things where uh, a loss of extension causes problems, but fixed uh, a flexion deformity will stop people feeding themselves, combing their hair, you know, lots of very uh, simple tasks are affected by that. So if you relax down for me. In terms of those injuries, um, I shattered my elbow several years ago, and when I had my metalwork in that elbow, I had a flexion deformity whilst it was in, and that was very, very distressing. But 
I was advised by the surgeon when the metalwork came out, I wouldn't remain with that uh, problem with flexion. However, I have continued to have a slight um, extension deformity, but it doesn't really affect me other than the inability to do press-ups, which is not something that I do routinely these days. After we've assessed the movement, we then need to look for um, any obvious discomfort. So we'll start off by palpating the bicep tendon, um, because we can get discomfort to the elbow due to the bicep tendonitis. We're going to press distally to see if there's any discomfort, which may indicate a pathology. If we've got discomfort over here, we want to check for any issues um, uh, with the bicep tendon. What we'll do is we'll take, get the patient to appear to shake our hand, so with a forced um, supination. As that happens, we'll see the bicep contract, and I'm pressing with my thumb to see if there's any discomfort. And again, we'll repeat on the opposite side as well. So uh, pronation to start off with, and then moving the hand, supination, pressing over the bicep as we do so. And no discomfort on either side? No. Super. And it's important that the patient has their wrist deviated ever so slightly as you're doing that forced supination. With regard to the triceps, we're going to have the patient um, uh, flex their elbow all the way up. And I'm going to palpate again behind to make sure there's no issues. But if not, and we're going to ask the patient to forcefully extend against resistance. Any discomfort there? No. Okay. And we'll do the same again on this side again, just palpating the tendon and then forcefully extending against. Thank you. We also then need to press over the lateral epicondyle and the medial epicondyle. Again, checking both sides as you do, thinking that we're getting discomfort on the medial epicondyle if we have a golfer's elbow, and on the lateral epicondyle if we're looking at a tennis elbow. Now, it can be very useful to ask the patient, or find out from their history, certainly, how much discomfort they're in before you start palpating there, because these can be two very, dis uh, very uncomfortable areas of the body. At that same point, we can also press in around the back of the medial malleolus to see if we can feel the ulnar nerve. So we're going to come across or underneath, doesn't really matter which, but we want to palpate above the um, medial epicondyle as we should be able to feel the ulnar nerve running in its groove here. Now, if there's been a problem with the ulnar nerve, we may find a thickening there, literally feeling rather than a piece of string under your skin, maybe feels about the size of a pencil. Conversely, if there's any discomfort there, was there any pain? No. then that might suggest a recurrent irritation to that uh, nerve. It's possible for the ulnar nerve to move out of the groove in which it sits, an ulnar nerve subluxation, and that may again cause that thickening or perhaps a tenderness. After I fracture my elbow, my ulnar nerve will sublux, it will come out. So on that very rare occasion, I go to the gym, and if I try and use the barbell, I will end up with an ulnar nerve claw afterwards on those fingers. So it is a very important part of the examination if the patient has previously broken their elbow, certainly. So after having uh, palpated the, um, uh, the elbow to see if there's any discomfort of our tennis or golfer's elbow, we need to formally assess that. So we're going to have the patient take their arm to 90 degrees, hand supinated, so palm facing upwards, and they're going to bring their wrist towards them. And I'm going to press over the medial epicondyle, firmly, but not so the significant pain. Have the patient flex their wrist upwards, and I'm going to try and stop them. And I'm looking to see if there's any discomfort at the uh, epicondyle there. We'll do the same again on the opposite side. Again, elbow to 90 degrees with your fist, and stop me straightening your wrist. Okay. Any discomfort to that? No. Super. So when it comes to checking for a, uh, a tennis elbow, we'll uh, ask the patient to squeeze our two fingers. But unlike, for example, the neurological examination, where we get them to squeeze as hard as we can, here we're going to ask the patient to squeeze only until they get discomfort, the lateral epicondyle, because if they're getting discomfort from um, uh, flexing the fingers and they push too far, that can cause prolonged discomfort here. 
So I'm just going to provide you two fingers. If you could squeeze them tight as you can and tell me if there's any pain. Okay. Yeah. And I can palpate over there at the same time. We'll do the same again. So take my two fingers and squeeze until there's some discomfort. Any problems with that? No. Super. We can uh, take that one step further though by again taking the wrist, patient's wrist to 90 degrees and have them try and flex their wrist up against resistance. So push up for me. And as that happens, we can see the extensor tendons contract. So once again, please. And if there is discomfort, then we've confirmed our tennis elbow. And we'll do the same again on this side. So again, try to bring the wrist up and tell me if there's any discomfort. No. Super. So to complete our examination, obviously we want to thank uh, the patient, but we also want to review any uh, elbow x-rays that may have been taken, but also do a neurovascular status, checking uh, for adequate blood flow and control of the hand. Well, thank you for that. Any questions for myself? No. Super. Well, thank you for joining us for that, uh, this video. I hope it's given a little bit more insight into what we're doing on the elbow examination. If you've got any questions, please put them down in the comments below and we'll try and field them for you. And if you subscribe to the channel, you'll get a notification when we're doing our next video. With that, take care. We'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.